Hello. Assuming your teacher presents you with a problem like this and tells you to find x or make x the subjects of the formula, how would you go about it? Well, that's why I'm here to help out. I'll show you some fundamental things you're supposed to know and understand about a problem like this that has fractions and you're supposed to make x the subject of the formula or make anything the subject of the formula that is not already the subject. So let's get down to it. So the very first thing you must understand is every time you have an algebraic expression or algebraic um, equation that has fractions, you must first think of the LCM of that equation, the least common multiple. That's the first thing to think of. So now we have a fraction here, a fraction here, a fraction here, and you also have a fraction here. Remember in my last video I said, even if it's standing alone, it's still a fraction because you can write it as five over one. So let's do that first and consider how to find the least common multiple of an equation that looks so complex. Let's get down to it. So five over one minus y, 3x minus 1 plus 2 over 4 minus 12x equals m over p. So at this point, I have all fractions, and then I can think of the least common multiple. But there's something strange about this question. If you consider this and this, it looks like there's something that we could bring out of it. So look at this. This can be factored. So as much as you can, make sure you factor everything in the denominator that can be factored. In fact, I would recommend that you factor everything that can be factored, both in the numerator and in the denominator. So this is what I would do. I would say that this would be 5 over 1 minus y over 3x minus 1 plus... 2 over, I can factor this, it becomes 4 into 1 minus 3x equals m over p. So, at this point, my equation looks simpler, not as complex as what it was before, because now I know that this 2 can divide this 4 and leave me with the 2, okay? So, I can go and say 5 over 1 minus y over 3x minus 1 plus 1 over 2 into 1 minus 3x equals m over p. Now that there is nothing to simplify, let's talk about the least common multiple. Now the least common multiple in this case, because this still, there's something strange about a combination of 3x minus 1 let me put this in parentheses. Okay, let's do it this way. 3x minus 1 and 1 minus 3x. It looks as if we just switched the signs or the positions. Now, there's something beautiful about math. When you switch the positions of numbers, you just get the negative of it when you're doing subtraction. Let me give you a quick example. Look at this. What do you think of 3 minus 1? What if we switch the positions? It becomes 1 minus 3. 3 minus 1 equals 2. 1 minus 3 equals negative 2. So you could almost assume that these two are the same. 3x minus 1 and 1 minus 3x are the same. It's just that the signs are different. So they have the same absolute value. If you remember your absolute value. So once two numbers have the same absolute value, you should just assume one of them as the least common multiple if it was a fraction. For example, if you had 1 over 2 plus 1 over negative 2, and you're asked to solve this, well, the least common multiple of this fraction is 2. All you have to do is solve this, assuming this is 2. And how many times will negative 2 divide 2? It's going to be negative 1 times. And then that's what you put here. You'll eventually get your answer to be 0 divided by 2 because this is obviously 1 half minus 1 half. Now you get it. So when we get here, you're going to ask yourself, 
How many elements are in the denominators that you could use to form the least common multiple? Well, I know there is a 1 that does, never makes a difference. There is a P makes a difference. There is a 2 that makes a difference. And there is this and this, but I can assume I can take just one of them. Okay, since this one already has a partner, I'm just going to take it because this and this have the same absolute values. Okay, so I just take it as the least common multiple. So it's going to be my least common multiple LCM will be equal to, let's start with two. We're going to take this. This one doesn't make any difference. We shouldn't write it. So that makes two. We take the P and we take this or we take this. Remember, it doesn't matter which one you pick. You will always get your answer. So I'm going to take this because it already has a 2 beside it. So I'm going to write 2p into 1 minus 3x. That's the least common multiple. The most important thing in solving any algebraic equation involving fractions is to find the LCM. Once you get the LCM, every other thing is you just multiply each term by the least common multiple, and your problem is half gone. I'm gonna erase the top sum of this and try and fix it. So let's say that we found the LCM and we have this equation, we just wanna multiply each term by the least common multiple. Let's do that. So, what I'm going to do is multiply each of these terms by the least common multiple, which will be 2p into 1 minus 3x multiplied by 5 minus, I repeat the same thing, 2p into 1 minus 3x multiplied by y over 3x minus 1. I move ahead again to this one. Oh, there was a 1 here. To this one, it's going to be 2p plus 2p into 1 minus 3x multiplied by, by 1 over 2 into 1 minus 3x. Let's erase this. And equals 2p into 1 minus 3x times m over p. There we go. Well, I've taken so much of the board. But don't worry, it's going to get very short. That's when I simplify this. So the next thing to do is to move ahead with this. So, firstly, this is over 1. There's nothing to simplify, you just multiply. 5 times 2p gives you 10p into 1 minus 3x minus this. Well, divide this not one time, but negative one time because it's the switched one. Remember, this is 1 minus 3x, this is 3x minus 1. It's the same thing as dividing 2 by negative 2. So you get negative 1, remember, from the example, okay? So this is going to be negative 1, that's what you get. So negative 1 times this is going to give you a positive 2p with the y, 2py. See, this is the toughest part of this question. If you get this, you're good. I say it again. This will divide through this negative one time because the signs, the, the, the numbers are switched. The, the numbers are switched in the position in the subtraction. So it's a negative one. Negative one times negative one gives you, changes this into a positive. Then 2p times y is 2py. That's it. Move on to the next thing. Here, this is going to take this out. And 2 will cancel 2. What you have left is just P. And then for the other side, you're going to have P taking out this P. You have 2M into 1 minus 3X. 
Ah, we're almost done. Now that we have this, and X is locked in a jail of parentheses, and this one too is locked. We've got to break the jails open and find the X in it, and that's it. So let's go. So you multiply this out. You have 10P minus, this is going to be 30PX, okay? This is going to be, you notice how I did not say 30XP. It sounds better to say 30XP, but you have to follow the alphabetical order. P comes before X, if I'm correct. Okay, this is going to be 2PY, and this is going to be plus P equals, you break this open, it's going to be 2M, that's 2M times 1 when you distribute, and this is going to be 2M times 3X is going to give you 6MX. Now, since we're trying to isolate X, let's put all the terms that contain X together. And how do we do that? We do that by moving, what would you like me to move? You know, I'm just gonna move this over to this side, okay? So it's gonna be, I'm just gonna add 30X to both sides, and when I do that, this leaves here, it becomes 10P plus 2PY plus P equals 2M minus 6MX, then this is added to it, plus 30px. Now I can take this away and rearrange this so the positive term of x stays on this side. Okay? Looks more beautiful like that. So when this is subtracted from both sides, it will disappear from here or it zeroes out from this side and it shows up here as a negative 2m. So it's going to be 10p plus 2py plus p minus 2m equals 30px minus 6mx. We're almost done. Since all the x's are on the same side, isolate. Factor the x. That's going to be x into 30p minus 6m. And on this side, you still have this. So the next thing to do is to divide both sides by 30p minus 6m, which will leave you with your x being all of this divided by this. So you have 10p plus 2py plus p minus 2m all divided by 30p minus 6m. If you want to, you may factor the 6 out here and you could do that, but I'm done. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions or any comments, please leave it in the comment section. And um, make sure you like this video if you actually like it, okay? And subscribe, hit the notification button so that you can uh, get notifications when I upload new videos. I do this for my students. And for anybody out there who needs to learn something, okay? So if you find this video interesting or this station useful, please make sure you subscribe, make sure you like the video and leave a comment that would encourage me to post more videos. Once again, my name is Newton, okay, one i I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Have a very good time.